Hello, welcome back to Elise Reads and Speaks. Today I am bringing you all of my five star reads from 2021. So I didn't think that I had a favorite book or favorite books. I was just going to give you all my five stars. But as I was looking down my list, I noticed which ones that I got, you know, kind of like super excited for it. I was like, all right, so I do like some of them better than the other ones, but we're just gonna go through the list and then I will tell you my absolute favorites from the year. So let's just start from the beginning of the year. The first five-star book that I read in the year of 2021 was Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. And this was quickly, well not quickly followed up by, but later on in the year, Wondersmith, okay? I gave both of these five stars. If you have not read this series before and you are a fan of magic and magical schools and these kids with magic powers going against each other, like it is a good time. I mean, I have been recommended this book so many times and I just had never gotten to it. I don't know why I've waited so long. And even as I'm saying that, I still haven't gone on to the third one, Hollow Pox, but I am betting that's gonna be another five-star read for me. These books were so good. My next five star read was One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. I know that I've talked about this one recently because I did a video about all the books that I love that have the bachelor trope. And spoiler alert, there are two other books on this list that have the bachelor trope because I love it. I love it. This one also has fat representation. There is different uh, mixed media in here and I just really like the way that this, to this story was told physically. I'm sure listening to the audiobook would be fun um, if they have a full cast, just the way that some stuff in here is. But I really did enjoy reading this one physically because of the mixed media presentation. So I would say try it both ways and you let me know which one you like better. But if you're into the bachelor trope, highly recommend this one. The next book on my list is A Wild Women and the Blues by Denny S. Bryce. This was one that took me by surprise. This was historical fiction. There were two timelines. I didn't know where the story was going and I didn't expect it to love it as much as I did. It was about this, um, gosh, would you call her a flapper? Not really a flapper, but kind of like a showgirl in that era. And she's in both timelines. Like it's her story in that, that historical fiction timeline, but also in present day, somebody is interviewing her for her story. And this, this book takes a turn that you would not expect. And when you get to the end, you're like, what? And it, oh, it was just so satisfying. I do think this is one that I would read again. One that took me by surprise. I even forgot about it until I saw it on this list and I was like, oh, that's right. That was a great book. Definite five stars. That was so good. The next one on my list is Malice by Heather Walter. I feel like I talk about this book all the time. I loved this one. Fairy tale retelling, okay? Sleeping Beauty retelling with sapphic relationship in here between Aurora and the Maleficent character. Like it, it was so good. The way that the magic worked in this world with um, the kingdom having graces, they're called graces, but their their powers were limited for a time. Like their, their power would start to fade. So these graces would fade except Malice, Alice was a, a dark grace and her her power wasn't going to fade so the kingdom would go to her for things that they they didn't want to go to like the pretty nice graces for like you know helping somebody die euthanasia that kind of thing man this was so good this is so good and i already got approved for the arc of the sequel on that galley and i'm so excited but i actually want to read this one again before i read the sequel because i i picked it up and i was like oh i love this book it was one of those that it's like <laughs> If someone was recording me, I feel like you could see the, the sun rays coming off this book. Like, ah, I just, oh man, I love this one. I loved it so much. <laughs> My next five-star book was a book club choice. This was Girl Made of Stars by Ashley Herring Blake. This one I, I talked about recently too. This was the one where there is a pair of twins one of them's name is Owen, which is weird because my kid's name is Owen. And Owen is accused of sexually assaulting his girlfriend. All right, the, the sister, it follows her, you know, how she's dealing with this, how she's seeing her brother in a different light. And it, it kind of shows the story of like how that could change your relationship with somebody you really love. And if somebody you love did something so despicable, you know, how would you deal with that? How would it change the both of you? Would you want to believe him? Would you want to believe this other person? And how even your decision and what uh, choice you make as far as believing who, like how that colors everything else in your life. Like it was, oh, that was so good. Definitely made me cry. <laughs> 
The next book on my list is The Last Fallen Star by Gracie Kim. This one is under the Rick Riordan Presents label, and man, it was good. It was so good. It dealt with um, Korean lore. Was it witchcraft or just like their their beliefs and their gods and how this one girl really wanted to be in this this clan of witches and it turns out that she didn't have that that power to be brought in with this line of witches but then she and her whether it was a stepsister or a close friend that was like a like a sister you know she decides to give her part of her powers and the kids go on a journey and it was a great time like it was one of those that just i read it so quickly and it was one of those whoosh like wow, this is a top middle grade read. Like this, this was a good story. This is another one that I have put in a request for the second one on NetGalley. They have not approved my request yet, but anyone on NetGalley, if you're seeing this video, please approve me so I can get onto the sequel because this was great. The next five-star book on my list was chosen by a friend. This is when I had all of my friends in book club choose books for me. I didn't know who chose what. So there's actually two five-star books on here. One is a five-star and I think the other one's like 4.5 that I rounded up to five stars, but still is a decent read. So the first one is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This was the story of the victim of Brock Turner and ugh, Brock Turner is disgusting, but it wasn't about Brock Turner. It was about Chanel Miller, okay? That's what I really liked. It was her story, you know, before that event, the actual event, and how the event changed the rest of the trajectory of her life. And it was just, it was so raw, it was powerful. I cried at the end, and to know that this is a real person out there, it's just like, oh my gosh, that was a great book. That was fantastic. And the next book is the one that I bumped up from 4.5 to 5. This was a graphic novel, Grass by Kyum Suk Gendry Kim. This was, this one has stayed with me. I've thought about this one a lot afterwards. I didn't know much about uh, Japanese comfort women during the war. If you're not familiar with Japanese comfort women, I implore you, please look it up because it is something that happened and <laughs> It's, it's really, really unsettling. Like, it's disturbing that these girls were brought to a place where these um, soldiers were just expected to, you know, take advantage of them. They would have sex, you know, like 60, 70 times a day with all these soldiers just cycling in and out of the room. And, and you know, it wasn't supposed to matter because they were used as comfort. Like, their, their thoughts, their lives, they, it just didn't matter. And some of these women, you know, went on to have lives later on. So this is somebody's real story as told to the person that was interviewing her. It like wasn't, wasn't the author that wrote this, that went through this, but it was like, I believe it was the author that was interviewing this person and wrote her story in graphic novel form. And some of these, these pictures on here, they really pack a punch that they use the graphics to tell certain emotions of the story. Like I remember there being several black squares and I believe it was her first time being raped. And when you saw those black squares, it was like, you know that she, she couldn't process what had just happened to her. And it was really, oh, it was a gut punch. Fantastic. I mean, not fantastic that this happened, but fantastic in the way that her story was told. It was, oh, so good. The next book on my list is Daughters of Sparta by Claire Haywood. This is another one that I looked at and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot, this one was so good. This one told the story of Clytemnestra and Helen of Troy like their sisterly bond and what happened when Helen of Troy left Menelaus and Agamemnon and went to be with Paris. So it didn't go the way that I would have expected it to go, like Helen of Troy's story. I, I pictured her as this, you know, girl in love and it's the epic love story of, you know, her, her prince finding her and taking her to a place that she'd be safe. You know, I feel like that's kind of the story that we're always spoon fed. And this one really took it in a different direction. It made me see Helen in a different light and not just some like flighty girl. I really enjoyed that. And plus it told the story of Clytemnestra, which we really don't hear. She was um, Agamemnon's wife and another strong character on her own. And it was, just, oh man, <laughs> I need to read that book again too. Man, talking about all these five-star books, I'm like, oh, I need to like space out time this year to reread some of my favorites because I was just so into them. Like the, the details are fresh in my head when I love a book so much. And Daughters of Sparta is right up there. 
Okay, the next one, I am just lumping four books into one because it was one series where I gave all four books five stars because I was heavily into it, and that is Hitched. The Bachelorette, <laughs> right? It's so good. I've talked about this one countless times. This is the Bachelor trope with all of these supernatural suitors. So, you know, there's like a gargoyle, dragons, vampires. Uh, what else is in there? There's an angel. Oh, it's great. And the one suitor is human and they're all competing for her. And then she finds out that they're all supernatural and they're recording a television show. And will she continue on to find her love or will she step away because they're supernatural? You know that she's continuing on, okay? There wouldn't be four books if she didn't. Oh, <laughs> this series is great too. And there are like offshoots of this series that I fully intend to read this year. The next book on my list is Catherine Howard, The Scandalous Queen by Alison Ware. Dude, you know me, I love Alison Ware. I give almost every book of hers five stars. I say almost every book because actually Catherine Parr gave four stars instead of five. Not bad but this, this was good. And I knew going into this that I'm not a big Katherine Howard fan because, you know, she's some girl that was just kind of swept up and wanting to be a queen, but this really gave her some humanity and deeper thought and made me see her in a light that I hadn't seen before. And I really appreciated that because I was like, you know what? I judged somebody too soon because, you know, the king pays attention to you and wants you to be his queen you're not gonna say no, you know? Like, you you can't say no, you can't. And I need to take that into account. Like, she was young at the time and swept up into this life that she had no desire to go into, and perhaps her choices weren't the best, but they, they were like some late teenage choices, you know? What was she, like 18, 19, around there? And suddenly she's like queen of this country and with a king that's like 40 years older than her. I can imagine you'd make some dumb choices. Man, this was a really good one too. <laughs> the next book on my list is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Ayumide. This one I have thought about so much since reading it. Like it was one of those that I was like, I get what you were putting down. <laughs> like I understand the the suspension of disbelief that I had to have to enjoy this story. You really do need a suspension of disbelief, but I understand why this story was told the way that it was, and I, I understand what the point of having this big conspiracy was to, like, throw in our face, like, this is what privilege is. Hello. Like, I, I got it. I got it. I think for some people reading it, it will be considered a little over the top, because, again, you need to suspend that disbelief. But for the people that just have an open mind and don't really care about where the story takes you and you're just there to enjoy the ride, I really feel you'll get something from it because I feel the point of the story was to show you what systemic racism is and how it's a network. Granted, it was, it was more of a literal sense of a network in this book, but again, I, I get what the author was trying to say, that this is how black people feel every day. I got it, man, powerful, powerful story. My next five-star read was A Bachelor Trope. This is If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. You know, I will say, going back on my Bachelor Tropes, I do remember One to Watch and Hitched more than If the Shoe Fits. So If the Shoe Fits is probably like a 4.5 rounded up to five stars, but I still highly enjoyed this one. This one also had fat representation, and she was also um, into fashion, and it followed her like wanting to be her own person, make her own choices about fashion, and there was the Cinderella Cinderella retelling in here. I liked that it was taken a different route than Cinderella because she actually had a good relationship with her stepsisters and her stepmother, and I just haven't seen that before, so I enjoyed that. So you're taking Cinderella and The Bachelor, smashing those two together, and putting some fashion in there is great. The next book on my list is another author that I always fangirl about. This was... Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. Dude, I love Caraval. I was very excited to read this spinoff series about Jax. I, I thought it was gonna be like a prequel type series that we wouldn't hear about the people from Caraval, but no, it, it kinda picks up where Caraval left off. Granted, it's not continuing the same story with, with Scarlett and Donatella at the forefront. This is about Jax, Jax's story. You get Jax's background, you, you are following Jax in this. But Scarlett and Donatella do make a cameo in here. Like, they have a conversation with him. And I was like, I know them. 
<laughs> you ever get like that? Like you read a, read a spinoff book or even like watch a, a spinoff TV show with characters that you know from a different TV series and you're like, yeah, I, I know you, I know you. That's kind of how I felt in this book. Dude, I love Stephanie Garber. She just writes in a way that speaks to my brain and makes it so happy and I can't wait to read the next one. The next book on my list I have recently talked about because it was in the month of December, and that was The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. This was a spooky story. If you were in the mood for something like that, highly recommend. It follows these trio of girls that once upon a time in this town, they were drowned, okay, for, you know, sorcery or something. However, before they were drowned, they, you know, put this curse on the town that they would come back every summer and take the bodies of three girls like body snatchers and have their revenge on the men of the town by killing some men. Sounds like a good time, doesn't it? It is a good time. And it's like the, the twist in here, it's, it's something that you know is going to happen, but at the same time, like, it is a good ride. <laughs> like, just come along for the ride, enjoy the show. Even if you know what's gonna happen, just sit back and enjoy it because this was a good, good story. The last three books that were five-star reads for me in 2021 were rereads, so I don't like count them in the list of new books that I'm gonna, you know, give my tingly award to. <laughs> but I will mention them, and that was The Lightning Thief, School for Good and Evil, and Pride and Prejudice. I have read Lightning Thief now twice, School for Good and Evil twice, Pride and Prejudice, I can't even tell you how many times I've read that book. That's always gonna be five stars for me. Love it. But all the other ones that I've already mentioned, those were, were the new five-star reads for me. And there was one in particular that I looked at on this list and it gave me the feels and I was just so excited to even pick it back up in my hands again. So I really feel that my favorite read from 2021 was Malice by Heather Walter. I, I can't even tell you why I love this book. It was just the type of fantasy that I'm into. You combine it with a fairy tale retelling in a way that I haven't seen this specific fairy tale uh, presented before. And I was just, I was so into it. And I am chomping at the bit to read the sequel. I'm so excited. When I like, think about how I look at the cover and I get excited, I feel like that has to be the top read, you know? It has to be, it has to be. So if you were paying attention to the numbers, that is 23 five-star books in the year of 2021. I did read over 200 books. <laughs> I think, gosh, what was my number? Like two, 210 or something around there? Some, something around there. I know that I read over 200 books. So I think having a good chunk being five-star books is a good omen, all right? We will see how I do in 2022. But that is all that I've got for you today. So thank you for tuning in to Elise Reads and Speaks, and I will catch you next time, guys. Bye.